was that was today. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to First United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Will. We are delighted to have you here as we worship God together this morning. Uh, just a few announcements uh, this morning. Uh, the church office is going to be closed uh, tomorrow and Tuesday for the 4th of July holiday. Uh, and very important, next Sunday we will be having a combined service. So just one service next Sunday at 10 a.m. So make note of that. Uh, we're going to have the, the quartet here, uh, King's Cadence. Uh, you will not want to miss that if you're in town. Uh, it's going to be a great Sunday of worship with music. So uh, again, just, uh, just one service next Sunday at 10 a.m. Sunday school will be at 9 a.m. Bible school is right around the corner, uh, about two weeks out on Bible school. So make sure to get registered uh, for Bible school if you have kids, neighbors, grandkids. Um, for the month of July, we're collecting school supplies for our 12 baskets ministry. This will be handed out uh, during our back to school bash on August the 5th. So uh, again, uh, several things going on in the life of the church. Uh, we want to uh, particularly uh, in our prayers this morning, remember uh, Mac King, uh, his father's in the hospital uh, right now and uh, got some things going on. Uh, my grandfather, if you haven't heard, he fell um, on Friday and broke his hip. And so uh, he's going to be having surgery either today or tomorrow. So I invite you to pray for him. Also, we continue to lift up the, the Burr family uh, in the loss of, of Donna uh, this past week. We, we lift up their family. Um, and so uh, let's go to God in, in worship and in prayer as we begin worship. Father, it's so good uh, to be in your house. What an honor. What a privilege to come and gather in your name. Lord, we love you. We 
praise you. We just offer ourselves to you during this time in Jesus' name. Amen. I invite you to stand with me. Yes, ma'am. Yes, what you got? What you got? Okay, so the, the United Women uh, in Faith are meeting on Thursday at 3 at Nevaeh's for ice cream. Yeah, very good. You have one? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Lindsay Wingler. Absolutely. All right. Well, let's stand together as we continue worshiping our... Our first song is America the Beautiful. It's hymn number 696, or it'll be on the screen. Remain standing as we profess our faith together using this ancient creed, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated and invite our ushers forward for the morning offering. Let us pray. Father, we come now to return a tithe and an offering to you. We pray that you bless these gifts, multiply them, bless the giver in Jesus' name. Amen.
We stand for our doxology. be seated and I want to invite our children down for children's time. studied those in school. Well, they came over from Europe because they wanted religious freedom. They wanted to be able to worship as they pleased, share their faith, and love others freely without the government telling them <coughs> they couldn't do it. So, um, they, they celebrated, they celebrated on July the 4th, the Declaration of Independence, when we when we um, got our freedom from Europe, for, from England. So remember the flag, we wave flags when we celebrate July the 4th? Well, Buddy has a story written by Johnny Cash, and he wants to share that with you now. I walked through a county courthouse square on a park bench at Old Men was sitting there. I said, your old courthouse is kind of run down. He said, nah, it'll do for a little town. I said, your old flagpole has leaned a little bit. And there's a ragged old flag you got hanging on it. He said, have a seat and I'll sit down. Is, is this your first time you've been to this little town? I said, yeah, I think it is. He said, you know, I don't like to brag. We're kind of proud of that ragged old flag. You see, we got a little hole in that flag there when Washington took it across the Delaware. And it got powder burned the night Francis Scott Key sat watching it writing say, can you see? And it got a bad rip in New Orleans with Packingham and Jackson tugging at his seams. And it almost fell at the Alamo beside the Texas flag, but she waved on though. She got cut with a sword at Chancellorville, and she got cut again at Shiloh Hill. There was Robert E. Lee, Bogergaard, and Bragg, and the South's wind blew hard on that ragged old flag. On Flanders Field in World War I, she got a big hole from a birthing gun. She turned blood red in World War II. She hung limp at low a time or two. You see, she was in Korea and Vietnam. She went where she was sent by Uncle Sam. She waved from her ships from the briny foam. And now they're about quit waving her back here at home in her own good land 
where she's been abused, she's been burned, dishonored, denied, and refused. And the government for which she stands is scandalized throughout the land. And she's getting threadbare and wearing thin. But she's in good shape for the shape she's in because she's been through the fire before. And I believe she can take a lot more. So we raise her up every morning. We check her down every night. We don't let her touch the ground and we fold her upright. On second thought, you know, I do like to brag because I'm mighty proud of that ragged old flag. <laughs> Let's say a quick prayer together. Gracious and heavenly God, we give you thanks and praise for freedom in our country. We thank you for God's love most of all. To help us, Lord, during this holiday season to be safe and happy and have a good time with family. In Jesus' name, amen. I've got a little surprise for you. Got some extras. All right. Thank you, buddy. Thank you, Diane. Our children are dismissed to Children's Church. You're going to go with Miss Jennifer today. of this life have grown I'll fly away like a bird from prison bars have flown I'll fly away And then I'll fly away to a land where joy shall never end. I'll fly away.
We come to a time of prayer in our service today. And like Will mentioned at the beginning of the service, there are several that we need to be praying for. Uh, Will's granddad, Mr. Van, um, who fell and broke his hip and is awaiting surgery. Uh, Matt King's father, who's in the hospital. Uh, the family of Donna Burr, we continue to pray for them at their loss of Miss Donna. And there was one back here, I, I, didn't, I wasn't quite sure what the name was, Lindsay Wingler. Are there others we can lift up this morning? Yes. 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 We definitely pray for our church all the time. Yes. Yes, ma'am. We'll pray for Reed and his family. Let's go to God in prayer today. God of love, may today be our best offering ever as we offer to you our hearts as they are filled with love, compassion, forgiveness, generosity, and goodness. And where we fall short, Lord, we trust in your grace to help us to be the people that you are calling us to be. Thank you for Jesus' teachings that make us think that lead us to seek reconciliation, that prompt us to go and grow in a deeper relationship with you. May this be our offering to you today. We give to you our hearts. On this Independence Day weekend, we pray for our country. Fill it with the love of truth and righteousness and make our leaders ever mindful of their calling to serve the people of this great nation with humility. We lift up to you those that are on our hearts and minds this morning, those who are anticipating surgeries, um, those who are recovering from surgeries or illnesses, those who are grieving loss of a dear loved one, those who are seeking reconciliation and relationship, or those who feel, who just feel separated from you. We also celebrate the opportunity that we have, Lord, to have communion together today. We pray to continue to be a community of love and support with your son Jesus leading the way for us. We thank you for the sacrifice of your son and the love that he demonstrated for us through his crucifixion and resurrection. Oh God, may we offer our gifts to Jesus and his love that is so amazing and so divine. Thank you that this week we had a determined group of young ladies who gave so much in service to you through yard work and painting and building, and it was done with servant hearts for the community of Wilkesboro. And for this, Lord, we give you so many thanks. And it is with a heart of servanthood now that we join together in praying the prayer that your son Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Thank you, Kelly. So this week we are continuing on in our sermon series, Christian. Christian, and we're looking at that word, Christian, our title, our brand name. What can we do to improve that? word Christian, Christian. Uh, before we get started though, let's stop for a moment of prayer. And as you pray with me, as always, please pray for me. Let's pray. O Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts and minds together be found acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. At some point in our life, we've always, we've known someone who has quit 
being a Christian. And our, our hope is that at some point, and our prayer is at some point, that they would rejoin, that they would come back to the fold, come back to the, the family. But here's the thing about folks that quit uh, Christianity. I think if we as Christians would do a better job at the things that we're supposed to do, <laughs> then there would be far less quitters and a whole lot more joiners. Quitters and joiners. Last week we began looking at uh, the word itself, Christian, and we remember that that wasn't the original designation. That wasn't the original description. The word Christian really wasn't used uh, a whole lot. It's, it's found three times in all of the Bible. Can you imagine? Go home, dust your Bible off, and look. The word Christian only appears three times in all, in all of its form. Christian, Christianity, Christians, three times. It wasn't a word that the early followers of Jesus used to describe themselves. When they talked about each other, when they wrote to each other and wrote about each other, they used a different word. Do you remember what it was from last week? Disciples. Very good. Disciples. Disciples. You remember we said that disciples, that, that's kind of different. Now, now, Christian, there's so many different varieties of Christian. There's so many different flavors of Christian that you can define and redefine Christian until you're okay with it. But disciples, there's not a lot of wiggle room there when it comes to being a disciple. A t disciple means that we are learners. We are apprentices, adherents, followers of who? Of Jesus Christ. Disciples, not a lot of wiggle room there. But as I said, this term Christian, it was a label that was applied by outsiders. It wasn't the original description and it wasn't the original designation. And so the real question we have to ask each other is not are we Christians, but are we disciples? Disciples. And being disciples requires action. We looked at one of the main descriptions of what Jesus said a disciple should be all about. We find that description in the Gospel of John in verse in chapter 13, verse 34 and 35, John uh, writes this down, but Jesus speaks these words. And Jesus says, a new command I give you, love one another as I have loved you. So you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. That should be our distinguishing characteristic as Christians, we're supposed to love, to cherish, to value and respect one another, how we treat each other. That's how they'll know. That's how the world will know, Jesus says, that you are my disciples. How we treat one another, our actions. Now, that was from the Gospel of John. And if you've been here for any length of time, maybe you figured out that the Gospel of John is Pastor Will's favorite gospel. Uh, and, and it is. I love the way that John writes. And he, write, he tells us not only what happens, but why it happens. But you remember, we had a whole series on the Gospel of John uh, just a few months ago. We talked about John was an eyewitness. And he was. He was an eyewitness to all that Jesus did, to the life of Jesus, the teachings of Jesus. He saw Jesus die on the cross. He saw the resurrected Christ. But then he saw the, the growth of the early church and the, the gift of the, the Holy Spirit. But all the while, even with the, the good things, John experienced a lot of persecution of the early church. John saw his friends, fellow apostles, put to death as, as martyrs. His friends, Peter was, was crucified upside down. Matthew was burned at the stake. Paul was beheaded. Think about all that John's eyes has, have seen. All the persecution. Yes, the church was, was growing and, and spreading, but it was hard. They were hard times. They were persecuted by the government. They were persecuted by Tiberius and by Claudius and by Nero. Uh, there was the destruction of the temple and then the destruction of Jerusalem and then Jews being banned from Jerusalem. And John, as an old man writing down his gospel, he had experienced all of that, all of that. And he writes about it in his gospel of John, the good news according to John. But he also writes some letters to the early church because John, as an apostle, as one who sat at the feet of Jesus, 
They counted on him to make sure they were doing things right. And so John wrote a few letters to some of the early churches to, to get them straightened out because they had kind of wandered in a different direction. You see, there was an offshoot of Christianity that had begun, and, and, and they had been measuring their devotion to God by their knowledge and experience, by their knowledge and and experience. And so John says, oh, you guys, you're, you're, you're kind of off base there. And so he, he writes them to let a letter to let them know that it's not about some kind of special knowledge or special experience. He writes them a letter to let them know what the, the main thing is. And we know it as the letter of 1 John. 1 John chapter 4, uh, verse 7 is our scripture for today. If you have your, have your Bibles, turn with me. And John writes in, in 1 John chapter 4, verse 7, Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who has been born of God and knows God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. And you're probably thinking, John, after all the things that you've experience. Yes, we know you sat at the feet of Jesus, but John, you've experienced some really tough things. You've experienced all this persecution and all this martyrdom, all your friends dying in such terrible ways. How can you say that God is love? And John would say, well, I can absolutely say that because, verse 9, this is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. This is love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be an atoning sacrifice for our sins, for our sins. Who's the our? Who's the us? That's you. That's me. That's everyone. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And guess what? God still loved us. Even though we sinned, even though sin broke his heart, God still loved us. And he loved us so much that he sent his son into the world to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Past, present, and future. God loved us so much that he sent his son into the world to be the atoning sacrifice. Atonement, bringing us back at one with God. The relationship had been broken and we have been brought back at one with God. Jesus atoned for our sins. He was the, the sin offering. The world was broken and sinful. And God, yes, God is a loving God, but God is also a just God. And so there's a price that has to be paid for sin. Sin uh, does not please God. God does not smile upon sin or wink at sin. God's wrath must be satisfied because he's a, he's a just God. And God's wrath was satisfied by Christ's death on the cross. Jesus paid the price for our sins. Do you know what that means, church? Very simply, that means that you will never be face-to-face -face with anyone for whom Christ didn't die. Let that sink in. You will, be, you will never be face-to-face -face with anyone for whom Christ didn't die. John continues in verse 11. Dear friends, since God loved us, we also ought to love one another. And I might add, I, I think that we owe it to God to love one another. So many people, when they hear the word Christian, so many people, when they hear the word church, they automatically think, well, quarrelsome, hostile, hypocritical, anti this, anti that. Church, I think if we would just get this one thing right, it could completely change our brand identity. Instead of people thinking that we're quarrelsome or hypocritical, they, they think, wow, those, those Christians, you know what? They're good people. They're the, those Christians, they're the, they're the best neighbors I've ever had. They're the best bosses that I've ever worked for. They're the best co-workers that I've ever had. Those Christians, I, I love doing business with them. Those Christians, they're, they're honest. They're self-controlled. They're, they're disciplined. They love one another. They fight for things that are right. They fight for their marriages. They're generous. They're kind. Those Christians... 
I think I may want to be one. I want those that peer, come to the edge and, and peer in on us, looking in on us. I want them to say, you know what? The world is wrong. What we're hearing in the media, that's wrong. Because these Christians, I, I don't feel coerced by them. I don't feel like they're trying to shove anything down my throat. I don't feel like they're trying to impose their way of life on me. But rather, I just feel drawn in their direction. Yes, sometimes I feel a little guilty, but I don't feel condemned by them. I'm nothing like them, but I, I like them. They're good people, those Christians. You know what? I think I might want to be one. Church, when we allow the, the love of God, the way that Jesus describes it, to be the filter for all that we do, the love of God, which is, which is grace and truth, which is, which is God is loving, but God is just. It's, it's grace and truth. It's, it's yes, we, you are forgiven, but go and sin no more. The love of God for one another. Wow, if we allow that to be the filter through which everything we do as a church flows through, I think there would be far less quitters and a whole lot more joiners. But maybe we need to quit Maybe we need to quit not loving others the way that our Savior loved us and learn to love one another as Jesus loves us. Let me pray for you. Father, this is simple to say, but so hard to do. Lord, at the same time, I, I know that for some of us, we're a little afraid to love like that because we're afraid that we might be taken advantage of, and, and we will. Some of us are afraid to love like that because we are afraid of what others might think. Father, I pray for every member of our church, for men, women, young people, our children, Lord, that they would learn to, to love others as it relates to the way that you love us. Lord, I pray that we would be able to love and respect each other in, in a way that reflects the debt of gratitude that we owe you. Lord, for our children, for our teenagers, Lord, that they would learn to, to love you. And Lord, that they would be loved by their mom and dad in the same way that God loves us. Father, I think this kind of love would, would change our world. It would change our identity as Christians and as disciples. Lord, that every time we would recognize that we are eyeball to eyeball, face to face with another person that, that you love and that you have sent your son into the world to die for their sins as well. Lord, I pray that we would just get better at being who you've already been for us, Lord, that we would be for others, Jesus. Lord, that we would be a, be a generation that gets this right and Lord, uh, that you would do something amazing with us and through us. And Lord, uh, in all things, we'll be like John and give you all the glory. Because all the glory, all the honor belongs to you as we've learned to love. I pray all this, Heavenly Father, in the matchless name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. I invite those that will be helping with Holy Communion to come forward. We typically celebrate Holy Communion on the first Sunday of the month here in our, in our congregation. And just a reminder, uh, this is the Lord's table. This is not our table. We practice open communion, so all are welcome at the Lord's table. This morning we'll receive communion by intention, which means that I will break off a piece of bread and place it in your hand, and you're invited to take that bread and dip it in the cup. Let's go to the table and celebrate through the great thanksgiving these ancient texts that uh, the church has used through the centuries to lead us in a time of Holy Communion. The Lord be with you. We lift up, lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth 
You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity and made covenant to be our sovereign God and spoke to us through your prophets. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. Your spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed and to announce the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry and ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death and made with us a new covenant by water and the spirit. The Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and Holy Spirit. And so we remember on the night in which he gave himself up for us, Jesus took bread and he broke it and he gave it to his disciples and said, take eat for this is my body, which has been broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And likewise, when the supper was over, Jesus took the cup and gave thanks to you and gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Lord, we pray that you would pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ, that we might be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by your blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your son, Jesus Christ, with your Holy Spirit and your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. the body of Christ broken for you. The body of Christ broken for you. The body of Christ broken for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The table's been set. I invite you to come as you feel led. It's always better to to come down the center aisles and return to your seats on the outside aisles. We'll also be glad to serve you in your seat if you need to do that. And we have some gluten-free bread also down here on the, the stool. Let us partake in the Lord's Supper.
Let's stand together as we sing our closing hymn, so fitting. They'll know we are Christians by our love. Let's stand and sing. Remember, next Sunday, this one service, 10 a.m. here in the sanctuary, King's Cadence will be here to lead us uh, in, in worship through music. It'll be a wonderful Sunday. 10 a.m., 9 o'clock Sunday school. Help us share the word there. Let's go forth in this place, and may they know we're Christians by our love. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.